Last season, the Arizona Wildcats really took the college football world by storm. They became one of the biggest surprise teams from last season, and they finished the season with a 10-3 record, which was their best finish to a season since 2014. Nobody had very high expectations for Arizona football in 2024. They were a team that was in rebuild mode after five consecutive losing seasons. Jed Fish got there in 2021, and he knew he had a lot of work to do at Arizona because they were a dumpster fire. And that 2021 season was miserable for Arizona because they went 1-11 that year, and their only win was against California in a game that they won 10-3. In 2022, the Arizona Wildcats took a step forward, and they won five games. So it was definitely an improvement. But heading into 2023, people weren't expecting a great season from Arizona. And their 2023 win total was only at 5.5. And, and halfway through the 2023 season, things were going exactly how we expected. Because they went 3-3 three and three in their first 6 games. But after that, Arizona would go on to win their final 7 games. And it started when they surprisingly destroyed Washington State on the road, beating them 44-6. to six. Arizona was a very scary team in the second half of last season, and they were a team that absolutely nobody wanted to play. They had a very talented two freshman quarterback on the rise, and that guy is Noah Fafita. And if it wasn't for Noah Fafita, this team may not have had the breakout season that they had last season. And after struggling to beat Stanford and having a pretty mediocre start to the season, Noah Fafita would be named the starter at quarterback after the first four games. His first two games were ultimately losses. But they were against Washington and USC, and he threw for a combined 8 touchdowns and over 500 yards in those two losses. And Arizona came up really short in both of those games, losing by only one possession. And despite the two losses, Noah Fafita was putting up incredible numbers, and Jet Fish definitely made the right decision by handing the quarterback spot over to a freshman like Noah Fafita. Noah Fafita would pass for 2,869 yards, 25 touchdowns, to only 6 interceptions. And he also had an insane completion percentage of 72.4. And again, he did all of this last season as a freshman. And he was one of the better quarterbacks in the country last season. And he is probably in some people's top 5 for the 2024 returning quarterbacks. Because he is just that good. And year 2 for Noah Fafita has potential to be huge. And when I talk about Noah Fafita, I obviously have to talk about Tetero McMillan. McMillan had 1,400 receiving yards and 10 touchdowns last season for the Wildcats. Fafita and McMillan were one of the most explosive quarterback receiver duos in all of college football last season. And similar to Fafita, McMillan is a young guy with multiple years of eligibility left and he will be returning for Arizona next season. And honestly, I don't think I can name a more electric quarterback receiver duo in college football that is returning next season. Brady Cook and Luther Burden will be electric. Dylan Gabriel and Tez Johnson will also be electric, but both Fafita and McMillan are on the rise and have potential to take even bigger strides moving forward. And that is what makes Arizona a scary team heading into the Big 12. And I understand people have their questions about what this team will be without head coach Jed Fish, because he really did Arizona dirty by leaving, and multiple Arizona players transferred out, and they lost a decent amount of depth. They lost their starting running back Jonah Coleman, who was a big piece to the offense last season. They lost their defense alignment, Bill Norton. They lost one of their top cornerbacks, Prysock. Those are just a few to name, and they had 29 players transfer out. But I don't think people realize how much talent Arizona actually kept and will be returning next season. Of course, they returned Fafita and McMillan, which is huge for the offense, and have fun stopping those two. But they also returned most of the other top stars on the team. They returned many stars on the defensive side that have potential to be NFL draft picks. Justin Flo had 45 tackles and a sack as a freshman last season, and he will be back at the linebacker position. They also returned their leading tackler and team captain Jacob Manu, and he had over 100 tackles last season as a sophomore, and he's another big linebacker to have back. He also had 6.5 sacks, 2 pass deflections, and an interception last season for the Wildcats. They returned multiple starters from last season in the secondary. They returned Dalton Johnson at safety, who was second in tackles on the team with 86, and he also had one pass deflection, one interception, and two sacks. They returned Gunnar Maldonado. He was third in tackles last season with 79, and he also had two interceptions on the season, including the highlight interception in the Alamo Bowl against Oklahoma. They also returned Trayden Stooks. He was fifth in tackles last season for the Wildcats with 55. He had seven pass deflections and one interception as well last season. They also returned another big-time player in the secondary, who was Takario Davis. 
He only had 25 tackles last season, but he was also a lockdown corner and he had 15 pass deflections. And he was definitely the best player in that Arizona secondary last season. Arizona is going to have a very solid secondary next season. They hardly lost any players in the secondary, and they return a bunch of starters on defense. And I know they lost their head coach, but they do return a lot of production, and a lot of people might be underrated in this Arizona team. And I do think that this is a legit Big 12 title contender, and I think they are going to win a lot of games again next season, because there is too much talent returning on this team, and it should really pay off. It will be interesting to see if the new head coach Brent Brennan can help carry over the momentum from last season, but they have the pieces necessary, and Brent Brennan brought along many players with him to Arizona from San Jose State, most notably edge rusher Trey Smith, who had 67 tackles and 6.5 and sacks for San Jose State last season. He also brought over running back Conley, who had just under 2,000 rushing yards the past two seasons for San Jose State, and he should be a solid replacement at running back for Arizona in 2024. Brent Brennan is an interesting hire for Arizona because he was a finalist for the Arizona head coaching job back in 2020. He's a coach with a lot to prove, and he doesn't have a crazy track record. He led San Jose State to a 26-19 record in three bowl game appearances over the past four seasons. Brennan also coached the Oregon State wide receivers a decade ago, and in 2013, he coached the Bolitnikoff Award winner Brandon Cooks. Brent Brennan is a head coach with potential, and he's been working his way up for 20 years. He also won the Mountain West Coach of the Year Award in 2020. And like I said, he hasn't had any crazy accomplishments, but I do think he has potential to be a solid leader for Arizona moving into the Big 12. And there's a lot of pressure on him to carry over the momentum from last year's double-digit win season. But the Big 12 is wide open for anybody moving forward. And I definitely think Arizona should be one of those teams in the mix to win the conference. The hype kind of died down after Jed Fish left, but maybe people are overreacting to Jed Fish leaving because this is still a very similar team to last season if we look at the talent returning. There are a lot of young freshmen and sophomores from last season returning, and I have no doubt that the offense is going to be very explosive with Fafita and McMillan. And when I evaluate the defense, I think this is a very solid defense. They probably have more questions up front, because they did lose Bill Norton and Tia Lois Avia, but they have younger talent that could step up. Tatai Yui Youngle and Isaiah Johnson should play a much bigger role on the defensive line for Arizona in 2024. But they also add a 347-pound chance for portal defensive tackle Chuba Mai. I don't know if I pronounced that last name right, but he could be a beast for the Wildcats in 2024. There are going to be some new faces in the interior of the defense. But there is a lot of talent on this defense, and the secondary should be one of the best in the Big 12. And even if Arizona has their struggles up front, they should still be very competitive because they could sling the ball deep and put up points on the offensive side of the ball. And over the years, the Big 12 has really became more about explosive offenses. Take that Oklahoma versus TCU game from last year as an example. So if Arizona has a secondary to match up with the talented passing attacks in the Big 12, then they should be just fine even if they have some weaknesses up front. And will it lead to a Big 12 championship? I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. I think Utah and Kansas State are looking like they will be very good at the line of scrimmage next season, and Arizona may have to be tough up front to compete with the best Big 12 teams. All we can do is speculate, and I love speculating because it is always fun, but I don't understand why the hype for Arizona is dying down so much. I get it, they lost their head coach, but this is still a very talented football team on both sides of the ball, and this could possibly be a team that is being slept on, because let's not forget what they just accomplished last season. They ended their season in dominant fashion by beating one of the best Big 12 teams from last season. And the talent for Arizona really showed them that Alamo Bowl against Oklahoma. Arizona returns most of their top stars next season, and I wouldn't be surprised if Arizona had a similar season to last year. And I'm definitely excited to watch the Wildcats play in 2024. And Fafita and McMillan are going to do incredible things for Arizona next season, and I have no doubt about that. But you guys let me know your thoughts about Arizona football heading into 2024 down in the comments below. But that is going to do it for today's video. Let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you'll love this channel. Because we upload a ton of college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing and also consider following my socials down in the description below. But that is going to do it guys and peace out.